Welcome back to another episode of The Factory. This week, some drooly assembly footage from the SMT assembly line. We talk about the future of PicoDev and as always, another prototype show and tell. Let's get started. Another week, another prototype. And this week I have for you the PicoDev touch sensor prototype. You can see here there are three touch pads on the front labeled one, two, and three. There's a indicator LED. Of course, this is a prototype, so we've just soldered a five millimeter LED there, but that ought to be a rear mounting surface mount LED. So that when we place all our parts on the back, we can still place an LED on the back, but have it shine through a hole in the board at the front. Taking a look at the back, it has the familiar PicoDev connections. This is the CAP1203 uh, three channel capacitive touch sensor the regular breakout, but we also have some crocodile clip connections on one side so that you could connect these to presumably anything you want to turn into a capacitive touch sensor. And of course, a 0.1 inch or 2.54 millimeter breakout for those same connections. So a fair few options there. And aside from the proto board, this is the first electronic PicoDev module that is a double unit. It spans two units of a PicoDev array. You can see each of these others are the standard 25.4 millimeter size and this one just fits over two modules. As always, let's take it for a spin. If I touch pad one, we can see on the plot the blue line for S1 jumps up and there's S2 and S3. You can see that interrupt light flashing on the front there. This week we set up our first production run of the PicoDev motion sensor. To catch you up, this is a six axis IMU with three axis accelerometer and gyro. And that's based off the MPU 6050, which is a bit of a darling in the maker community. It's been around a while, it's pretty capable and it's pretty affordable. The nice thing with developing a family of modules like this is that there's a lot of parts reuse, you know, the, the connectors, the decoupling capacitors, I squared C pull up resistors, LED, etc. They all get reused per board. Usually, you know, you just only have to set up the unique sensor itself and maybe the oddball supporting component. In the case of the motion sensor, I had to set up and align the motion sensor IC and just the charge pump capacitor. Turns out that the micro electromechanical machine that's inside this device needs a significantly higher voltage than the standard 3.3 volt supply. And so it does that boosting internally. So got those components loaded, aligned, did a dry placement to make sure that everything went down okay, and then began the assembly. And with the assembly underway, I got started writing a test script. So to test this device, there's actually a self-test the device can execute, where it stimulates each of the axes, and then you perform a check to see if that falls within factory tolerance. And as a belt and braces approach, I also included a check to make sure that the device is experiencing 1G for a consecutive number of samples because, you know, in a, a static test, the device should experience 1G or 9.8 meters per second squared roughly. And of course that should be regardless of the orientation of the device. So those devices are assembled and tested. The guides are underway. Just need to make some labels, bag them, and you should expect to see them on Core Electronics very soon. Let's talk for a moment about some future projects for PicoDev. There's only so far that purpose-built I squared C devices like, you know, touch sensors or temperature sensors can take you. You know, how do you introduce something like Globits to PicoDev? How do you take something that is just not I squared C native and bring it into PicoDev? Like maybe you want to interact with real electromechanical buttons. Maybe you want to drive a buzzer with PicoDev as an output device. You know, PicoDev is an I squared C bus system. So how do you get something like a buzzer onto an I squared C bus? Well, the answer is that we're going to have to build our own microcontroller based PicoDev modules, where instead of having, say, a temperature sensor on a PicoDev module, we have a microcontroller acting as an I squared C responder device connected to, say, a buzzer. So you can drive that microcontroller as if it were a purpose built I squared C device, it could present registers, you know, control interfaces so that you could pass to, in the case of a buzzer, maybe you pass to it the tone and duration of a certain pitch for it to play. And then the microcontroller interprets those commands on the bus and drives the device. It doesn't take too much imagination to see that by 
spinning or rolling our own I squared C device and using a microcontroller's firmware to act as the bridge between a non I squared C enabled sensor or output device, we could expand PicoDev to include so much more functionality. You know, buttons, buzzers, uh, bar graph displays. Although for that, you'd probably just use a, an IO expander, but you get the point. So I've done a little bit of preliminary work looking into that. I got a AT Tiny development platform and using the wiring library, created a basic I squared C responder device. So that's a device that, that can be addressed. And if the right data is written to the right register, it produces the right behavior. In this little hello world example, I'm writing to some device. I'm writing to the register LED1 and writing three bytes as if I'm gonna write, say, some red, green, blue data to drive an onboard Globit, a WS2812 addressable LED, or you know, a string of them. In any case, it's a matter of selecting the right part for the job. And I think the uh, a requirement for the project is that it ought to use something that, that exists as an Arduino core. Why? Because everything works with Arduino. There's already libraries for just about everything, and they're almost all open source and licensable to use. So definitely needs to be something with an Arduino core. It needs to have a fair bit of flash to accommodate holding user libraries. You know, the, the wiring library is several kilobytes. That's the, the um, Arduino library that handles I squared C communications. That's a few kilobytes. You throw in then a device library to drive, say, a Globit, and there's you know easily another kilobyte there. It needs to have a fair few pins just to just to give us room to breathe. You know, if you want to if you want to control several LEDs, if you want to have like a address, uh, you know, solder jumpers to set many different addresses, it helps to have a, a few GPIO accessible for that. And it needs to be small. You know, it needs to be in the uh, QFN kind of scale. So maybe like a twenty pin. QFN package would be appropriate. And it's more than likely that with those conditions met, you know, of course it needs things like, it needs an I squared C bus for one. You don't want to be, don't want to be bit banging I squared C in firmware if you can help it. And of course, SPI, because you may want to interface to an SPI device, you know, to act as a SPI I squared C bridge between those two buses. Of course, UART, of course, a analog to digital converter. Absolutely. So we're looking for a capable little chip, and of course it has to be pretty cheap. So I'm gonna spend some time in the parametric search, and we'll see what we can find. In any case, that'll be a bit of a longer term project, but expect to hear about some movements in that area very soon. What kind of devices would you want to include in the Picadev ecosystem? Now that if we, we open up the possibilities to expanding to non I squared C sensors, buttons, et cetera. I think buttons are a pretty good place to start. It's, um, you know, the PicoDev ecosystem as it stands doesn't have a great deal of opportunity for like direct user input. So a button would be great. I think a buzzer would be great. The first output device. A rotary encoder. Oh, a rotary encoder. Absolutely. Got to have a potentiometer in there. I wonder if that gives the audience the idea that well, probably true. We just sit around going, what can we make? <laughs> <laughs> As always, if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, especially for some good hardware, then open a thread on the Core Electronics forums. Until next time, thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.